everybody how you doing I pray that you're all blessed and well in this video what I want to talk about is prayer and the things you should be praying for in your daily life and praying them every single day in fact because many people neglect prayer and when they do pray they pray usually selfish selfish gains um, but instead of praying for all those things, we ought to pay, pray for spiritual things. And the first thing that I suggest that people pray for is wisdom, number one. Pray for wisdom. Because without, you know, in the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, is the fear of Yahweh. The Bible says so. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yahweh. Now, there are many people wise in the world so to speak um, but the Bible even says that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise <clears throat> you get people that are businessmen you get people that are, are doctors lawyers they're very uh, quote-unquote wise but I would say they're more knowledgeable than wise um, and they don't even believe in the Most High Yet they can make the best business decisions, yet they can make uh, decisions regarding uh, uh, leadership and all of that. And they have leadership qualities, but they don't have the fear of the Most High. Therefore their wisdom is zero because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The beginning of it. So if you don't even fear the Most High, you have no wisdom. You have no wisdom. You might be wise in the world's eyes, but you're not wise in the most high's eyes. So every day we should be praying for wisdom. Pray, Lord, Father, God, give me wisdom to handle this day. Give me wisdom in decisions that I ought to make regarding my family. Wisdoms that I need to make regarding work. Wisdom in, in the way that I answer people in the way that I treat people, wisdom in the way that I ought to spread your gospel to others, to give me the right wise words to speak, wisdom in every situation throughout your day, and you should be praying this every day, it's no use just praying this once and never praying for wisdom again. <clears throat> Look, when we first come to the Messiah, we pray, Lord, take out my foolish heart, to take out my foolishness and, and give me a mind of wisdom. To, to seek after your ways. <clears throat> but even every day, we ought to pray for wisdom. That, I, I think that that should be your most um, regarded prayer, is the prayer for wisdom. Because without the Father's help, without our Heavenly Father's help in, in everyday life, you're going to mess up. God is the all-wise, all-knowing, our Heavenly Father. He knows the beginning from the end, and He's the wise one. So, if we just ask Him to impute to us for some wisdom, like I say, in, in regards to financial decisions, in regards to the way you, your, you and your family, or the way you should treat your family, uh, if you're the husband, Wisdom in the way you ought to lead your family, if you're the wife, wisdom in the way you ought to submit to your husband in a wise way, if he's not godly, to lead him to the Most High. Um, if you're the child, pray for wisdom, pray for wisdom for your parents, pray for wisdom are you to, ought to, to, to walk in obedience to the Most High's commandments and to seek after Him and to live a life pleasing to Him. So seek, uh, so pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom every day and we, you can never have enough wisdom. The person that says they, they've reached the ultimate core of wisdom and they're so wise is the greatest fool of all. Alright, we have to grow every day in wisdom. I can tell you, I pray for wisdom every day but I still, make, uh, I still do foolish things in my life. Because the heart of man is bound up in foolishness. And so we have to... Uh, pray for wisdom for our walks every single day. Number two, you ought to pray for a hedge of protection around you and your family. Pray that God protects you. 
where you may travel each day, even if it's a short distance to work and back. Pray that he travel, that he takes you there and back safely. There can be a lunatic on the loose and they can attack you and your family. You can get in a car accident. Uh, you can slip on the kitchen floor and a knife go into your neck. Anything can happen. So pray for a hedge of protection around you and your family. Um, and protection against unclean spirits that are always seeking to roam. The Bible says Satan walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So pray for a hedge of protection around yourself and your loved ones. That, that the Most High protect you from false doctrine. That he protect you from false pastors, false, false teachers, false teachings. That he just put a hedge of protection around you, you from temptation, that you don't fall into temptation that day, that your wife or your husband doesn't fall into temptation, that your children or your parents don't fall into temptation, or your brothers or your sisters. Just pray for that protection that he that uh, that that he protects you each and every day. Number three, pray that his will gets done in your life that day. Pray that, that He will guide you um, not to seek to do your own will, but to do His will that day. And that He use you as a vessel to glorify His name that day. Ask Him to, to give you the opportunity to come across somebody to spread the gospel of Christ, to sp spread the gospel of the Messiah amongst lost people, that He, that he puts them in your way or that they can that he, that he gives you an opportunity to witness to the lost that he gives them open hearts to receive his word and that he just uses you to glorify his name and to honor his name and to do his will in uh, in your life that day number four thank him for his blessings upon your life that day Thank Him that you're blessed enough to be waking up uh, in, with a roof over your head. Thank Him for His blessings of that you're able to eat, that He's blessed you with food, that you're privileged enough to be able to eat food when many others around the world are starving. Thank Him that you've got a nice bed to sleep in, a warm bed, um, a job if you've got one. Uh, thank Him for the fact that you're able to see if you indeed got sight and if you don't have sight thank Him for the fact that you got ears to hear that that you're able to hear because there are many people that are not able to hear that are not able to see and some of them are mute and deaf uh, the, uh, sorry some of them are mute and blind uh, they can't hear nor see like Helen Helen Keller was I think um, Thank Him if you're able to walk. Thank Him that, that, you, that you're able to walk. Thank Him that, that He's looked after you all these years. That He's guided you. That He's chastised you because He loves you. That, uh, you know, just pray these uh, thank, thank Him for these blessings upon your life. Thank Him that, that you've got the ability to think and reason where many people don't because of... of, of uh, um, you know, they disadvantaged people, uh, mentally disadvantaged or, or whatever terminology you wish to use. Just thank Him. Thank Him for all of your blessings. And there are so many brothers and sisters that we can thank Him for. If you've got kids, thank Him that, that, that you're blessed enough to be given kids, that He blessed your womb or that He blessed your wife's womb. Because it's him that forms the child in the womb, the Bible says. Thank him for, for uh, uh, that you've got ten fingers, that you're able to use them if you've got ten fingers. And if you don't and you've only got one hand, thank him that you've got that one hand. And if you've got no hands, thank him that, he, that you're able to walk. And if you're not able to walk, thank him that you're able to see. And if you're not able to see, thank him that you're able to hear. If you're not able to hear, thank Him that you've got two hands or whatever the case is. There are blessings in your life. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day. It was one. Uh, it was a car watch. Yeah, we get car watches. They look after the cars. And when we come back, we always 
most people, or I wouldn't actually say most people, maybe 50% of people give them a tip. Uh, they, they look after the cars in, in, in shopping malls and stuff like that. And I spoke to this guy and he's like, you know, I really want a car and one day when I get a car, all these people that thought low of me, you know, they're going to see I'm something. I'm like, why do you want to impress people? Is that what you live for, to, to rub it in somebody's face and say to somebody one day, hey, you used to think I'd amount to nothing, now I've got a car. What use is that? Is that your driving life? And he's complaining and he's like, you know, it's hard and it's this and it's that. And I'm like, hey, you're talking about getting a car. You're complaining because you don't have a car. But look at your blessings. What blessings do you have? And he couldn't think. And I said to him, show me your hands. And he like showed me his hands. And I'm like, how many fingers do you have there? And he's like, I've got 10 fingers. And I'm like, well, isn't that a blessing? There are people that can't even use their hands that are born without, that are born with half arms. There are people, there's an old person somewhere in the world that's on a wheelchair. They can't walk. Thank him that you're able to walk. I said to him, that are you better than Jesus? Are you better than Yeshua, our Savior, our Lord? And he's like, no, I'm not better than him. And I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, but Jesus walked everywhere. Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't uh, uh, ride, ride in a car. He walked with his sandals in the desert for crying out loud. And if he's being king, can do that, and you're not greater than him, why are you trying to be greater than him by, by uh, you, because you crave a car in this life? Uh, and it's not that he needs it to get to work. He just wants it to show off and to rub in people's faces. That's vain, vain and vanity and it's foolishness. And he's like, but Jesus, ride, or Jesus rode, had a donkey. I'm like, don't twist God's word. Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem when he was about to be crucified. And another woman came along and heard this and she was agreeing with me, you know. People need to count their blessings in life. I bet you that, that guy had a car. You know what? Because he's got a heart that's bound up in foolishness and vanity, the next thing he'll be praying, well, now I want a, man, a house. When he gets a house, he'll be praying he wants a mansion. It's all vanity and it's all material garbage. Instead of just thanking God for what we do have. Often, so often, people look at what they don't have instead of looking what they do have. If you've got children, do you know how many people in the world want children? They're married and they can't have children. If you do, that's a humongous blessing. Just imagine your life in this world without your child or children. Just thank Him for His blessings because they are many and, and we need to be thankful for them. And, the, and you know, complaining and discontentment is a sin against the Most High because He knows what's best for you. And the Bible even says, with food and raiment, food and clothing, let us therewith be content. The next one, pray that He gives you boldness in this life. You know, so often as believers, we're too afraid to talk about Christ. And I've even spoke about this before. I've done street preaching in different areas in front of a lot of people and I've preached his name with boldness and I used to be a person that was timid and scared and shy around people that I didn't know. I couldn't do public speaking, I couldn't do a, pu a public speech uh, even in the classroom amongst my peers. I hated it, I used to quiver, I hated it, I even wanted to stay at home those days in primary school which is, is low school, junior, whatever you call it in the US. And I didn't want to go to school those days because I just hated public speaking. And God just gave me a spirit of boldness. But there are still times, there are still times where I feel uncomfortable talking about Him because everyone around me is talking about the world. They're talking about foolishness. They're talking about vanity. They're talking about things that just are complete rubbish. Uh, just meaningless chatter. Really, and it really is meaningless chatter. And it's like, you know when you bring up Christ, you know when you bring up the gospel, you know that, that it's going to offend them. Because remember, if you're not of this world and you're in Christ, and then you're not of this world, and they're of this world, they're going to hate you. And many of them are bound with evil, unclean spirits. And it's, they're going to take offense because they have control over those vessels. And they're going to think the things that you are talking of foolishness. Because the Bible says that the spiritual man 
or, or the natural man, meaning those that are aren't born again, those that are bound deep within their flesh and they're not born again by the Holy Spirit, by the set apart Spirit of the Most High, many of them are, are bound and controlled and spiritually blinded, completely blinded, and they cannot understand the things of the Spirit, the Bible says. But sometimes, you know, God uses those words that you speak he penetrates their hardened hearts, he softens it and you sow a seed. And it doesn't mean you're going to see an instantaneous, miraculous conversion. Because many of them that you do see, many of them that you do see that convert instantly, you know, I hate it when people say, Hey, I went and preached today and I converted 12 people. How do you know that you converted 12 people? Do you know their hearts? Do you know the hearts of man? Are you the Messiah? Do you know the hearts of man? You don't know if they truly converted. You don't know if they're going to fall away into the ways of the world again. You don't know if there was a true conversion or not. You can say they, 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 they accepted, they, they, it seems like the, the Messiah, you know, like the word of the Most High got, got through to them. But you don't know if they truly saved, brother or sister. You don't know that. So don't declare somebody say when you don't know that. I used to, throughout my church history as a child, rededicate my life back to the Lord over and over as a teenager, as a child, as, you know, do it because you see it, you see that's, you think that's the gospel. And instead of realizing the only true conversion comes when you realize, hey, I would never go and do those things again unless I was a false convert. Then you'll understand, yes, we still sin after true salvation and we still get you know, there's, we're always going to fall short in certain areas because of the weakness of the flesh. However, you're never going to completely rebel against God. And when you do, you have a huge conviction in your heart. It feels almost like your whole world has collapsed. It feels like you're a complete failure. And it, it, it stinks. It really does stink when you when 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 you do fall short in certain areas. It stinks. It stinks. Um, and that's how it will feel if you're a true true child of God. But before I go way off topic, yeah, you pray for boldness. That 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 you know that you're not intimidated by the world. That you're not intimidated by people or the ways of the world. And that you speak his word with authority, that you speak it with boldness, that you speak it with meekness, that you speak it authoritatively if needed, and, and stern with certain people if needed, because love rejoices in the truth, but to try and do it in the most humble way possible, but to remain bold. Pray for boldness every day. Okay, next, pray that he reveals sins in your life. That it reveals them to you so that you're able to repent from them. Sins that you're not even aware of. And, and sins that you are aware of that you're struggling with. Be it short-temperedness, be it anger, be it vanity. Whatever the case is. Pray that He, that he uh, helps you every day to walk in, 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 in a closer relationship with Him. In a closer bond with Him. That, that He um, reveals sins in your life that you're not even aware of. Say, Father God, show me areas in my life where I can improve, where I can serve you better, that have been obstacles in my relationship with you. Um, reveal them unto me because I may not even be aware of them. This day, reveal a certain sin in my life. Show me my sin. Help me to overcome that sin. Help me to live a life more pleasing unto you. And if you're struggling with certain sins, pray, Father, you know, help me to overcome these things that I'm struggling with. Help me, Father. You know, and, and just pray that, 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 that He reveals these things to you, like I say, hidden sins in your life. Because many people don't pray these things. And if you will be praying these things, if your first prayer and, and your most important prayer is the prayer of wisdom daily. That's why I say then you start realizing what you ought to pray. And lastly, pray over your food. Whenever you eat, pray Father, I pray that you sanctify this food. 
I pray that you bless this food and I receive this food in faith. I receive this food with thanksgiving and be with those who are not as blessed um, to receive or to, to have the privilege of eating this food. And I just pray you sanctify it and purify it through the blood of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, just pray that He sanctifies the food that you eat because that's something we ought to pray. Um, and lastly, do not pray repetitive prayers. You know, some people, they will write down a list and they will say, and they will repeat this prayer. Father, I believe in your son. I have faith in him. I'm going to be strong today. Father, I have faith in your son. I believe in him. I'm going to be strong today. Father, and it's like they repeat, and that's witchcraft. To repeat a line over and over, Jesus spoke against it. Yeshua spoke against that. He said the scribes and the Pharisees pray prayers of repetition. Do not be like them. But pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's showing you how to pray. Your Father which is in heaven, hallowed be his name. Holy is his name. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, pray that his will gets done through you this day the same way as it is done in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then he says, uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. <clears throat> in other words, whatever your needs are for that day, pray that he gives it. And the daily bread... Give me Jesus Christ. He said he is the bread of life. And for all your needs, just pray that your needs are met. He's, and then he says, um, uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them the trespass, as we forgive them the trespass against us. In other words, pray that he forgives your weaknesses, your sins, your transgressions. And that... Um, at the same way as we ought to forgive those who trespass against us. Then he says, lead us not into temptation. In other words, pray that you're not pulling into temptation that day. But deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That doesn't mean you must repeat those words. It means pray after this manner, he said. All right, we don't pray repetitive prayers. That's witchcraft. That's the same as the Catholics counting the rosary. Counting the rosary, you don't find that in, in the scripture. That, that's just repetitive garbage. And it's, it's, you're not praying with your heart, you're praying with your mind. you saying, Father, I rebuke the spirit of iniquity and I trust in your son Jesus Christ to help me through this life. I rebuke, rebuke the spirit of iniquity and I trust in your son Jesus Christ to walk through this life. And you keep praying that over and over. I just find that... Uh, you manipulating your own mind <clears throat> you're not praying from your heart and uh, you're not praying with a trueness with a true repentant heart and and you know even if your prayers are every day are the same thing they don't have to be the same words every day but these are some of the things that you ought to pray for wisdom a hedge of protection around you and your loved ones a uh, spirit of boldness uh, that he keeps you from false prophets and false teachers and false teachings. Um, that, he, that his will gets accomplished in your life every day. And that he shows you sins that you aren't aware of so that you can overcome them. And your blessings. Thank him for your blessings that you've got, which are many and abundant. I pray that this helps you, brothers and sisters. May the love and the peace and the joy and the wisdom and the glory and honor and, and mercy and compassion and the Holy Spirit of the Most High be with all of you. May he lead all of you to a life that is pleasing unto him and to give you all wisdom um, and to give us all wisdom in our daily walks. And stay blessed and see you next time. Take care and shalom. Bye-bye.